and their signature was on that. And so you would capture their signature, you know, so that you had, there's, I mean, it was like, there was a specific box you had to put around their signature so that, and I mean, I don't know every reason why you do that, but when you printed out the, the register, um, you know, that whatever you put in that box was the signature on, you know, the register at the, at the polling places and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And that's the signature that you would verify against with the mail yes. ballot? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, when you verify the mail-in ballot mm -hmm. and you're checking the signature, what other information for privacy purposes could possibly be exposed at that point? When you're, when you're verifying the, si the vote signature, by mail signature? Vote, vote by mail signature and you're looking at the signature on the DIM system, is there other information that comes up on the screen that would be personal and private that would, would uh, be a, some type of violation of uh, a person's privacy. Um, I don't. Uh, I'm not really. I guess I don't really understand. What you, so, so when I'm going on the computer to verify the signature to the signature that's on the vote by mail, um, I don't really remember what. So you would just when you were trying to find a certain voter, um, you would just you know go on the search part of DIMS and put in their name. Um, and I mean, it would bring up the signature. There, it brings up their affidavit. Their affidavit. Mm -hmm. And and you know, a, a screen comes up with their name and address and really anything that it's on the affidavit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just for a time check, it's about ten to twelve, so we got about twenty-five minutes, right? Hey, we're good. You have to pick Bryce up, I yeah. 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 Yeah, we're good. Okay. Um, I, we might have to do this in two things. I yeah, mean, that's I, fine. I mean, it, I. Uh, there's a lot of there's just a lot of stuff that I'm having right. to. Right. Um, let's continue with the with the uh, with the process though. We, we kind of jumped off the off the rail there. Uh -huh. uh, let's go back to when you're registering the people that comes in, and then it's brought in to the DIM system. If it's rejected, those are mixed in with the ones that are accepted. Yes. So it's all a mix. So you it wouldn't be possible to take a whole bunch of ones that are just missing or that were rejected and just throw them out or get rid of them? No, I mean, anything's possible. And all you have to do is unstaple the, because you t staple the batches together with a front paper that shows you what day you scanned it in, you know, what the batch number was, um, who scanned it in, you have to initial, um, things like that. But I mean, uh, once you scan it in, it's in there unless somebody purposely goes and deletes it. You know, well, which is a possibility. I mean, you absolutely are able to go in and delete an affidavit. And it, so it's an image on the computer, which is what the right. affidavit it's is after you scan it in. And you can delete You can delete it. If you are an administrator, I couldn't delete affidavits. Okay, so only someone in, in authority could do that. Mm -hmm. um, were you aware of that ever happening? Um, no, I, I'm not aware of it happening. Although I am aware that affidavits would come up missing. I mean, there I would go on to try and find a signature and there would be no signature captured. But how did we get this information in here? So at one point there had, you know, this voter wouldn't be in the system if we hadn't once before scanned a, you know, registration card into the, into the DIM system. And so sometimes there weren't images captured and I was always told that it was a bug through DIMS and write it down and send it over to Annie is who we talk to, um, who Shanna talked to most of the time okay. about bugs. But um, yeah, I don't know if anyone do Annie, it. Annie is the tech that handled the DIM system mm -hmm. interface. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not aware of anybody doing it. You know, I've never, I never saw anyone deleting any affidavits out of DIMS, but there were definitely some missing. In 2016, June, mm -hmm. the pri uh, primary election, mm -hmm. there were a large number of provisional ballots, mm -hmm. uh, pretty much unproportionate to, to any other time before or any other county. Mm -hmm. um, and this is strictly your opinion. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what would have caused that situation? Um, really, and if you're not comfortable with that, I No, it's fine. I think that a lot, I mean, there were a lot of disqualified um, 
voters, I mean, when they, you know, try to register, um, it goes back to sending them letters, you know, to their mailing address and them not receiving them or, you know, what, what the case may have been. But, I, I mean, I don't think that it was because people didn't register in time. I think it was they registered and there was an issue with their registration. And is it the policy of Trinity County to send out a notification that you're registered now, that your your registration card has been accepted, or a policy of Trinity County? It's um, when I went through the elections code, you were supposed. I mean, you're supposed to send out. They have cards that you order. Correct. You know that you send. Um, to voters, letting them know that they are registered, and you know what party they are registered as, and which. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is, did. did